In today's podcast, you'll learn all about bag vocabulary, including backpacks, satchels, sling bags, and duffel bags. You'll also learn some idioms connected to bags that will help you expand your vocabulary. Welcome to Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hello and welcome to the podcast, especially if you're a new listener. And if you've been listening for a while and come back, thank you very much. With more than 50 years of teaching between us, Reza and I are going to help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing really well. It's lovely to be here podcasting with you. We've already recorded a few podcasts. We normally get together and record three at the same time. I had a, a, a nice cup of coffee and a beautiful piece of homemade chocolate uh, sponge with Craig. So that has perked me up. I feel like I can take on the world now. I'm pleased to hear it. And I must confess that today's topic is a fetish of mine. I don't know if you remember a while ago, we did a podcast about stationery, pens, notebooks, papers, those kind of things that I really love going into stationery shops. Today's podcast, Bags, is another area that I absolutely love. I'm not obsessed by bags, but I am very, very, very interested in bags. I'm looking forward to our topic today. I don't share your your fetish, let's say, although I do like a good bag. I appreciate the difference between a good bag and a bad bag. When I see someone put heavy objects, for example, shopping, which is clearly too heavy for the bag they're using, I, I, I just can't bear it. I think, oh no, the handle's going to break. That bag is not meant to carry such weight. I, I can't bear to see it. <laughs> well, you say you like to have a good bag. Let's unpack that for a minute and look at exactly what you mean. Did you get the... Yeah, yeah. unpack the bag. Unpack the bag, but unpack the idea of having a good bag. Backpack is our first word on the list. A backpack is a bag typically with two shoulder straps and you wear it on your back. That's why it's called a backpack. And it's often used by students, sometimes hikers, when they're walking around. Now, what, in your opinion, Reza, does a backpack have to have? What qualities in order to make it a good backpack? It needs to be waterproof. Yes. And it needs to be adjustable because no two people have the same back. So it needs to be adjustable so that it fits correctly to each person's back. Waterproof and adjustable. For me, uh, and very good, secure zips. Yes. Which close. Those are the three things. I'm pleased you mentioned zips because good zips are essential, in my opinion. They should be smooth as well as strong and not break. And I agree with the other points you made about being adjustable so that it's comfortable. We can also say comfy, C-O-M-F-Y, a comfy backpack. And I would also add it should have the appropriate useful compartments, those dividers inside the bag where you can separate different things, separate your possessions, everything in its place and a place for everything. Craig, people often use the word backpack interchangeably with the word rucksack, R-U-C-K-S-A-C-K. Would you say they're exactly the same? Not exactly. They can be used interchangeably. And a rucksack is similar to a backpack, but very often it's bigger, it's larger and we can say it's more rugged, R-U-G-G-E-D. You'd use it more for hiking long distances in the countryside, maybe climbing a mountain, maybe camping outside or military. If you're a soldier, you'd have a, a rucksack, whereas backpacks could also be used for that use, but they tend to be more for children going to school or for someone carrying their laptop. In, in a backpack on their back. Now, the next type of bag we've got 
is a word which is very, very, very often mispronounced by Spanish speakers. I'm talking about a suitcase, not a sweet case. A sweet case would be una maleta dulce, or maybe some kind of case, a bag with lots of sweets inside. We're not talking about that, unfortunately. A suitcase, S-U-I-T, suitcase, is a large bag used for travel, and these days often has wheels. Una maleta in Spanish, just so we know what we're talking about. And those wheels should be strong, strong wheels in my opinion, especially if you're flying, you need to have wheels that don't break when the luggage handlers, the people who work at the airport and they change the bags from the aeroplane to the bus or tractor that takes it to the terminal, they need to be strong because they really do throw those suitcases around, don't they? The wheels break easily. In fact, you've given me an idea, Craig, a challenge for listeners. If any of you have ever seen or heard of a sensitive, delicate baggage handler, let me know. I don't believe you. I've never seen one before in my life. A baggage handler who handles the baggage or luggage delicately, I believe such a thing doesn't exist. So if you've ever seen a person handling baggage in an airport delicately, please let me know. I want to know about it. I've never seen one. And on this topic, I do have a suggestion and a tip for listeners. When you get your bags thrown around, they often get dirty, they get scratched, they get ruined. And let's face it, suitcases are not cheap these days. If you want a good one with strong wheels, you're going to be paying quite a bit of money. Yes, you can go to the airport and get it wrapped in plastic. That costs money. Why don't you take an old T-shirt? This is my wife's idea. An old T-shirt, cut off the sleeves or sew the sleeves together and then put Velcro, sew Velcro onto the bottom of the T-shirt and put the T-shirt over the bag or over the suitcase and then attach it at the bottom with the Velcro. You can still use the wheels, your luggage is protected and you can reuse it many times and you're not using plastic. Oh, wow, that's a great idea. Very good idea. I will put a photograph in the show notes of the one I use when I travel. Go to inglespodcast.com slash 533. And if you have a few minutes spare, you can protect your suitcase with an old T-shirt. Now, I'm going to be traveling quite soon uh, back to Ireland. And I'm not going to be there long. So I don't want to check on a suitcase and put it in the hold of the plane. I'm just going to use a carry-on bag. In other words, I'm going to carry that bag on to the plane so I don't have to check it in. So it's a bag which is small enough to go inside an aeroplane. They won't oblige me to check it into the hold. That is a carry-on bag. Our next bag on the list is a messenger bag. And you can see a picture of a messenger bag if you put messenger, M-E-S-S-E-N-G-R, and then bag in Google search, click on images, and you'll know exactly what I'm going to describe. By the way, this is a very useful method of clarifying vocabulary. If you're not sure what a word means, probably there's a Google image which will show you in a second exactly what it is. It's a bag with a very long strap that you can wear across the body. A strap is a very thin piece of plastic or leather or material that you can put on your shoulder or around your neck so that you can wear the bag on your body. And these messenger bags are commonly used by cyclists when they're delivering messages, for example, or food, <laughs> or maybe motorcyclists, or just for casual use when you're walking around a city. The next type of bag is a duffel bag. That's D-U-F-F-E-L, duffel bag. It's a large, usually cylindrical bag with a top closure. So it only opens at the top and closes at the top. And it's used above all for travel and for sports. So quite often a duffel bag might be used as, we could use another word, a kit bag. Something where you keep your kit, K-I-T, your things for sport. Very often a duffel bag is used as a kit bag. I've never really seen the point of duffel bags because in order to find something that's at the bottom, you have to take everything out. 
no compartments inside, nowhere to store things, just put everything together and then tip everything out just to find one small thing. I totally agree. I've never had one and don't want to have one. I can't see the use. But if you ever steal millions of dollars, that's when a duffel bag would come in useful. Let's take a quick break here because I know you listen to this podcast to take your English to the next level. But what about your speaking? Is your fluency improving? Are you happy with your speaking skills? My conversation course focuses on making you a more confident and more fluent English speaker. You'll join me and a small group of motivated students, and we'll meet on Zoom and have topical discussions, role plays, debates, and presentations that will expand your vocabulary and help you express yourself effectively in English. So be proactive and take the first step towards becoming a confident and fluent English speaker. Send me an email today to craig at englishpodcast.com and I'll send you details of the next online conversation course. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the podcast. Our next word on the list is a handbag, H-A-N-D-B-A-G, a handbag. Now, in the US, that has a different name. So what I understand from a handbag in the UK is a bag typically carried by a woman. And inside the handbag, the lady would carry personal items, maybe tissues, money, makeup, those kind of things, mobile phone. Now, in the US, that's called a purse. The confusion is, in the UK, a purse is only for keeping your money and credit cards. So that word purse has two meanings, depending on American English or British English, which one are you using? So again, to clarify, a handbag in the UK is a small bag carried by ladies. The same thing in the US is called a purse. But a purse in the UK is only for your money and credit cards. Now, for me, Craig, it's a bit of a mystery to know exactly what women have in the handbags. When was the last time you looked inside a woman's handbag? Probably about three days ago. My sister always has her handbag open. It has a zip on the top, but it's always open. Whenever we go to a bar or a restaurant, there is her purse inside her handbag, there for the whole world to see and potentially steal. So I'm constantly telling her to close the zip and be careful that she doesn't lose her money in her purse. Okay, but you didn't put your hand inside. Oh, no, I don't think that's acceptable, is it? You can't go into a woman's handbag that's without it. her permission. That's a, I was. It was a trick question. I was wondering to see, I was waiting to see if you would say, oh, the last time was... And I was going to say, Craig, you never put your no, hands into a lady's bag, unless never. you're a lady. Gentlemen should never, ever look into a lady's handbag. That's one thing my mom explained to me very clearly when I was a boy. Absolutely. Now, similar to a handbag is something called a clutch bag, C-L-U-T-C-H. The verb to clutch something is to hold it tightly, to hold it in your hand with force. And let's imagine that a lady is going to a wedding or a christening, maybe an opera or the theatre, quite a formal occasion. She may carry a small handheld bag that does not have straps. She's holding it in her hand. She's clutching it in her hand. That's why it's called a clutch bag. Craig, have you ever had a handbag? I have never had a handbag, but I have had a man bag. And what do you mean by that? A man bag is like a handbag, maybe smaller, and men can use it for their wallet, their mobile phone, their keys, their small change. And let's face it, guys, these days we're carrying a lot of stuff around with us. Our pockets are not big enough for the phone, which is big now, it's heavy, and the wallet and everything credit cards. So yeah, a man bag solves that problem. Do you use man bags? 
I used to use them a lot when I was younger, virtually every day. Now I occasionally use one. What about you? Yeah, I always have a man bag with me. What do you carry your phone and wallet and keys around in, in your pockets? Well, like you, apart from being obsessed that every bag should have lots of compartments, I like clothes with lots of pockets. So very often my clothes will already have about six pockets in them. So usually I find these days I have enough pockets in my clothes to carry my things. But if not, then I will take with me a handbag, which will have many compartments. I like my compartments, just the same as you. So that's why you walk with bended knees <laughs> exactly. and so low because you've got so much weight in your pockets. Oh, it's all that money weighing you down. <laughs> that's the reason, exactly. <laughs> Moving on to shopping bags, we can also say carrier bags, C-A-R-R-I-E-R, -R -E a carrier bag. Back in the day, used to be plastic. These days, they can be made of different material, including fabric or even paper, cardboard. These days we go to the supermarket, we're persuaded to buy a bag for life, which is a shopping bag made of fabric so that we're saving the planet, which I always find incredibly hypocritical because in a supermarket, everything you buy has loads of plastic packaging around it. What's your opinion on shopping bags, Reza? Craig, you've got me onto an interesting topic there. Now, I haven't been to the USA in a long time. I think you were there fairly recently. So we're talking about the world's arguably greatest superpower, a country famous for amazing adventures and being innovative and leading the world in many ways. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, this country still, when you go to a supermarket, will give you a crappy paper bag with no handles. Has it changed? Well, it's been a long time since I've been shopping in an American supermarket, but what I remember and what I see on the TV and films these days is, yeah, they still use those brown paper bags, maybe because Americans tend to do shopping in their car. They don't walk long distances, so they don't need handles on their bags. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Yeah, and I don't identify America with using recyclable plastic bags. So now... I would say the vast majority of Europeans go to the supermarket with recyclable plastic bags. So bags which you use time and time and time and time again. You don't seem to see them on American TV or films. They haven't really become popular, have they? I don't think so, no. So yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. Maybe we are being more ecologically friendly. A word I remember from my school days, going to school with my school books, is a satchel. S-A-T-C-H-E-L. A satchel. What's a satchel, Reza? It's a bag with a flap, something which opens and closes, and a long strap, which will go over your shoulder. And it's typically used for carrying things like books or documents. So a student or even a teacher might use a satchel. There's a very good story about an old brown satchel, isn't there? There is on the website from Jose. So if you go to inglespodcast.com and search that word, satchel, S-A-T-C-H-E-L, and also Jose, I'm sure you'll find his story. Another word that takes me back years, not so common these days, briefcase, B-R-I-E-F-C-A-S-E, -E. that's a a flat rectangular bag that has a handle or a strap and it's used for carrying documents and laptops. Although documents and paper these days we don't tend to carry, I think briefcases have been very much replaced by laptop bags, don't you think? With only a laptop inside. With a laptop and then the few papers that you need in besides your laptop. Yeah, yeah exactly. So people are more interested, logically, in accommodating their laptop. So those bags will be made so that you can fit paper into it as well. Yeah, because if you carry documents around regularly, you probably carry a laptop around with you as well. And in a, a laptop bag that's specifically designed to carry a laptop, you'll often find additional compartments in that bag for accessories like a mouse or memory stick, chargers, that kind of thing. Craig, what do you understand by a crossbody or a sling bag? That's kind of like a backpack, but it only has one strap 
on it. So it doesn't go over both your shoulders. It only goes over one of your shoulders and can come across your body from the left to the right or from the right to the left, depending how you wear it. It's a small or maybe medium-sized bag and you wear it across your body. You can also change it from the front of your body to the back of your body. In other words, you can have the strap going across your back or the strap going across your chest. Have you ever had one of those? I still have. I use it when I go cycling because it's very convenient. It's very small. You can sling it over your shoulder, which means to throw it quickly. And that's why it's called a sling bag. And it's big enough for a bottle of water, sunglasses, some money. And I take that with me when I cycle. Reza, if I say to you, don't forget your fanny pack, what am I referring to? I guess there you're using American English. I would say something different in British English. A fanny pack is a very small bag worn around the waist. So it goes around the middle of your body. It, there's no strap over your shoulder. It's simply one long strap which goes either around the back or around the front, depending on how you wear it, around the waist. But in British English, we would probably call it a bum bag. Because the idea originally was that the, the compartment where you put things hangs round about where your bum is. Your bum is your bottom. So originally it was designed for that purpose. But now a lot of people prefer to have the, the, the space where, the, where they're carrying things at the front rather than at the back, at the bum. I guess that's so that you can keep an eye on it better. So it's harder for someone to rob you if the, you've got it at the front, right? Exactly. I'm a big, big fan of, of bum bags when I go traveling because your money, your passport, your important documents are right there around your waist. And I usually have that on me when I'm traveling from when I get up in the morning until I go to bed at night. So a bum bag is small and it carries the essentials. Just one word about the fanny pack and bum bag. Bum, of course, UK English slang for the back of your body in the middle. And the American equivalent is fanny. However, in British slang, and be careful, please, <laughs> how you use this word, fanny is a vulgar term in British English for vagina. So it means the opposite. In English slang or British slang, the fanny is at the front of the body. And in American English, fanny will be your bum at the back of your body. Yeah, that, that's why I would never say fanny pack. I can't bring myself to say it. I prefer to say bum bag. Yeah, it's uh, definitely <laughs> a bit of a shocking word for Brits, that word. Craig, do you ever or have you ever been to the gym? I used to go quite regularly. Unfortunately, I've fallen out of the habit. So I haven't used my gym bag for quite a long time. What about you? I'm going this very afternoon, believe it or not. Good it's, for you. It's a new me. The, the, the listeners are probably shocked. Uh, You're working on the new Reza. Yeah. I've, I've taken a fancy. That means I become very fond of going to my, my gym, but above all, to do things in the water aqua therapy and aqua gym so to do that i definitely need a gym bag because i'll need to bring my swimming trunks my flip-flops etc so i've uh, got a lot of use out of my gym bag recently i'm happy to say are you going to organize classes in aqua gym or do you do something by yourself no no they're organized classes yeah I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to say that I'm usually the youngest person there. Is that good or bad? <laughs> it's only bad if you're, if you're the last one to do the activities. <laughs> so if you're, if you're the fittest one in the group, then that's okay. But just don't be the... Oh, uh, the oh no, I'm the youngest, but I'm not the fittest. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things that are waterproof against water, you might have a beach bag that's waterproof because if you go to the beach, obviously you'll probably uh, want to go to the sea, go swimming. You often have wet clothes, a wet towel. Take a beach bag, which is waterproof, a large bag, and you use it to carry items to and from the beach, a beach bag. Now, Craig, we've spoken about lots of types of bags and cases. Have you ever come across a nutcase? 
a nutcase. <laughs> well, quite a few in my time, yeah, but none that actually come to mind. What do we mean by a nutcase? A crazy person. A crazy person who does unpredictable, mad things is a nutcase. An absolute nutcase. Reza, do you know what we're going to have for lunch today? I've no idea. No one has told me. So no one has let the cat out of the bag? Not yet. What does that mean? No one has revealed the secret unintentionally. So if you let the cat out of the bag, the secret is now known. But you didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. No, nope, no one has let the cat out of the bag. I do not know what I'm going to have for lunch today here in your flat, but I know it's going to be good because it because I'm not is. because I'm not cooking. <laughs> no, oh no, no, no! A few weeks ago, we had an absolutely superb shepherd's pie made by Craig and a chili con carne. Very, very good. Believe me, listeners. Another expression with bag, another idiom, is to be in the bag. If something is in the bag. It is certain, it's assured, it's definitely going to happen. You can say, according to the latest polls, for example, the election is in the bag for this particular party. Or according to the way the football team is playing, the cup final is in the bag. They're definitely going to win it. Now, Craig, when I was younger, I used to often hear my, my parents argue and one of the typical things my mother would say to my father is, you couldn't fight your way out of a paper bag. What was she really saying to him? She was saying he was weak. He was not a strong person. Maybe he was incompetent or he didn't know how to do something. He had no ability to achieve things. If you can't fight your way out of a paper bag or punch your way or argue your way out of a paper bag, then it's something that you can't do. And if you want to add emphasis, you could make the paper bag wet and say, Razor's dad couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. So my mom would say this to my, my dad quite a lot. And eventually he would get really irritated and he would say, hey, pack it in. So he, he wasn't packing his suitcase. He wasn't going to go anywhere. He wasn't, he wasn't that desperate. But he said to her, pack it in. He was saying, stop doing that. Stop saying that I couldn't punch my way out of a bag. Please stop saying it. Pack it in. So if you say to someone, pack it in, you want them to stop doing something. Especially it could be a job or an activity or something annoying. You tell them to pack it in. And that's connected to bags because, of course, when you go on holiday, you pack. You pack your bag. You pack your suitcase. And I'll remind you about the expression we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. To unpack something is to explain it more, to look at the details. So if there's a problem, if there's an issue that needs to be discussed, you can say, OK, let's unpack this. Let's unpack it. Let's talk about it. Let's look at the details. Craig, instead of having a lovely piece of double chocolate cake with a cup of coffee after the podcast why don't we go to a new cafe i've discovered where they have vegan tofu rolls do you fancy one of those absolutely not that's not my bag ah not your bag what do you mean by that it's not my cup of tea i don't like it it's not for me it's not something i enjoy so not my bag indicates that something is not what you typically like. Another expression with bag is an old bag. If you call someone an old bag, be careful because don't, don't you're, do it is my advice. Because, don't, don't call anyone an don't, old bag. Don't do it, especially <laughs> in front of them, because it's a derogatory term, a, a nasty, not very nice expression for an old woman who is unpleasant. So if you're having an argument in the street with an old woman, you could say, oh, go away, you old bag. But be very, very careful. It's a strong insult. You should not use that in front of someone unless you really want to insult them. So calling a woman an old bag is an unpleasant old lady. There's actually another idiomatic expression specifically for women, a bag lady. A bag lady is a homeless woman who, because she's homeless, 
carries her belongings, her possessions around in plastic bags. She might also, the stereotypical thing would be to maybe have a shopping trolley as well. Maybe, maybe not. But she'll have lots of plastic bags because everything she owns is in those bags. That is a bag lady. It's interesting, isn't it, that we say bag lady, but we don't say bag man. It's curious, isn't it, because men do exactly the same, don't they, some homeless men? But there's no term for that. There is a bag man. That would be someone in a drugs deal who is taking the money. That's true. Completely different meaning, yeah. A wind bag, W-I-N-D, a bag full of wind. That may be obvious if you think about it. If you call someone a wind bag, that means they're a very talkative person and they're very tiresome to listen to. That word tiresome is really tiring. It makes you tired listening to them. They're full of wind. They're a bag of wind. Reza, do you know any wind bags apart from us? Only myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me, you, you and I. Well, Craig, it could be worse. Maybe we are wind bags. Maybe we talk without stopping all the time. Speak but, for yourself. Well, yes, <laughs> I, I do too much. But at least I hope to think we are not sleaze bags. Sleaze, S-L-E-A-Z-E, -E, sleaze bag. What is a sleaze bag? That's a very unpleasant, lecherous man. A man who, when you look at him, he looks very dirty, very maybe sexually threatening, not very nice. Yeah, it's definitely a negative term. And another word with bag that I just thought of is douchebag, which is very popular in American English, D-O-U-C-H-E, bag, douchebag. Literally, a douchebag is a kind of a, bag, a small bag or a syringe that, that ladies use to clean the vagina. But if you call someone a douchebag, that's calling them horrible, contemptible, despicable, maybe an asshole or a jerk. So... It's a very strong word. Be careful how you use it. But another word with bag is douchebag. Speaking of toilet activities and bags, douchebags, you've just made me think of another, which I hadn't thought of before. <laughs> I'm f sorry for the, for the, the vulgar language. A shit bag. Mm. Would you ever call a person a shit bag? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, if a person shit is a shitbag, so shit, uh, excrement uh, in a rude way, if a person is a shitbag, they're just not very nice. They're In some way, they're horrible. They're a shitbag. Yeah, they're a bag of shit <laughs> or a shitbag. <laughs> it doesn't sound nice, but it's a very common term. We use it a lot. Well, I couldn't think of a nicer way to end the episode. Well, so, bag. <laughs> <laughs> would you say, Reza, that this episode is in the bag? It's in the bag. Yeah. But now it's your turn to practice your English. We would love to hear from you. So why not send us a voice message and tell us where you are and what your name is, obviously, and any ideas that you might have for a future episode. You could reach us via SpeakPipe. That's S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E -E dot com slash Inglés podcast. There's a link to that in the show notes to this episode 533 englishpodcast.com slash 533 to go to today's show notes. Reza, how can people reach us by email? If you prefer to write, you can get Craig if you write to craig at englishpodcast.com or me at belfastreza at gmail.com. And if you're a Spanish speaker studying English and you're interested in some paid material to aid and help your studies, why not have a look at the Mansion Inglés store? Go to store, S-T-O-R-E dot dot net. As always, we'd like to say thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. What they do is they donate as little as $1.50 per month. And as a way of saying thank you to them, they get instant access to audio transcriptions of the podcast. If you're interested, uh, have a look at the link in the show notes to patreon.com slash podcast and maybe consider uh, sponsoring the, the podcast through a modest donation. We'd like to say thank you to every single one, but we haven't got time. So regular listeners know that what we do is just mention our most recent new sponsors. Who are they, Craig? They are Jessica Negrier, Ronaldo Nino, and Walter Zange. Thank you to you and to everybody 
who is kindly supporting the podcast. Now, we don't know the topic for next week's episode. That's why we're asking for your feedback on SpeakPipe. But we do promise there will be a podcast next week. Until then, thank you for listening today. Have a lovely week. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, learning about bags, please tell a friend so that more people can listen. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs>